What's up guys, this is Crudog Gamer bringing you the first of many installments on the comprehensive guide to Vision Planet slash Vision Planet for Dummies. Uh, I am not a smart fellow, so I figured I would dumb this down as much as possible. And today we are going to be talking about top water fishing. Probably the most uh, popular top water or the most popular fishing method in Fishing Planet right now because it's still relatively new is going to be top water fishing. So the basics to all of this um, are fairly simple and anybody be able to grasp it. It's, it's not hard and it is a lot of fun because you've got a new fishing method that you're able to use. Um, and I'm kind of testing out some new spots here. So fishing is a little sparse, but I'm trying out some, some lures and spots that I haven't used them before. So let's talk lures, right? Let's talk lures, tackle, and, uh, and, and rods, tackling rods. Uh, so there are three kinds of topwater lures that you're going to be fishing. We don't have buzz baits yet. We don't have whopper ploppers or anything crazy like that. But we do have poppers, frogs, and walkers. So I've got uh, the three different kinds right here. Right now I'm throwing a three-quarter ounce gray popper uh, just because it's a little bit of a cloudy day where I'm fishing. But I want to show you guys the methods here of what you know how I'm catching fish with it. So the poppers are obviously popping baits, and the walkers and frogs will be walking baits. Now there are frog poppers, which uh, they're fairly effective on largemouth bass, especially in Florida. You know the best largemouth bass map in the uh, in the game. But these poppers seem to be highly effective on steelhead um, and largemouth bass, and sometimes even striped bass if you're uh, if you're lucky. The walkers seem to be a little bit better on that. So. I'm going to show you guys how I use a popper. I know it's a little loud because of the, uh, the waterfall over there, but I'm going to show you guys exactly how I uh, use a popper depending on where I am and, and stuff like that. Now, there's three or four different methods to popping, right? So there's the, the standard, which a lot of people use and it works well, is just a reel and a pull, right? Reel, get the slack up, long pull, weight, reel, long pull real slack up it's it's really simple right it's just a it's kind of a less effort way of fishing it but sometimes it's not as effective as the other methods um, my favorite way to do it is get the slack up and do two sequential pulls right and then I'll mix that up pretty much every cast and I'll do you know two then three and then a one pop and then I'll do another you know two or three and we just caught a fish. So that's going to go into another thing I'm going to talk about here in a minute after I get this fishing. So popping is relatively simple. The goal is to make the bait pop, right? Without sending it flying across the map behind you or something like that. So how you do that is short pulls of moving the rod, right? Combined with your right click or uh, just the simple um, like double tap and right click without moving your player. Uh, it's it's kind of intuitive. You kind of have to figure out the way that you like to use the most. The way I like to do it most is that uh, I like to move my player and I like to pull my rod up at the same time in short pulls. And that gives me a pop without retrieving too much line. I don't send the bait flying behind me. Now, I'm going to throw into an area where I'm fairly sure I won't catch a fish. Uh, so we can talk a little bit more about the pop in here. Because it is very... It seems very interesting, or it seems very uh, scary when you first start it, right? Not, not necessarily scary, like horror movie scary, but, you know, it's a little intimidating because you, if you don't know how to do it, you know, you, you don't really want to go out there and waste your time, waste your day, waste all your money on fishing planet trying to use a fishing method that you're not used to, you don't know how to do. But I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's going to produce bigger fish. I've caught bigger fish on top water than I have on uh, just about anything else. In, in the past few weeks anyways. It's where pretty much all my unique bass in Florida come from is top water fishing. Um, as you can see, I'm catching steelhead in San Joaquin right now off of it. So it's an extremely effective way to catch a lot of fish. And it's a lot cooler because you get to see, okay, I feel like I should catch you now. There's a trophy steelhead off the top water. Example, right there. That's a good example. So let's do a little short cast and we'll talk about uh, what that lure looks like as far as being far away versus being close. So I do have a little bit of current here helping me out. 
So one of the tips I'm gonna give you here is if you're gonna do this method, which is just a pop, there's no way I'm catching a fish right here. Yep, I just got bit right there. <laughs> if you're just gonna do a single pull pop and you reel the slack in, I suggest you keep your rod at an angle, left or right, we're about to catch another fish. All right, well that was a uh, case in point right there. We're catching uh, fish in an area I was not exactly expecting to catch fish in. I think this is another steelhead. Is that a Chinook? I couldn't see the color on him. So I wouldn't tell you this. I wouldn't tell you guys this shit if it wasn't true. You're gonna catch a lot of fish fishing uh, fish in topwater lures. And more than likely, they're going to be good quality fish as well. No, nope, that's a striper. So there you go, 17 pound striped bass. I've, I've really got to find a place where they're not going to bite me. So that was my first tip right there. If you're going to be a single pull guy, right, you're just going to do the, the one pull and reel your slack, and then another pull, I suggest keeping your rod at an angle to the left or right, okay? Um, at a low angle. You're still going to get a good pop and you can still double pull it. It's going to be a, a more subtle pop that way, right? If you're going to do it in you know, the CDG fashion, old crew dog gamer here, you're going to set your rod slightly to the right, you're going to reel that slack up, and you're going to get two, three, maybe even four pops depending on how, uh, how crazy you're feeling. But that's all I'm doing. It's the difference between a subtle pop which is just your reel and then uh, it's just your reel your slack up and then a pull without moving your player like this and you still get a two bar pop and so the game still knows you're popping and doing the uh, moving your player and getting that more loud pop action going on so We'll see if I can catch another fish out front. It'll be much easier to see it out here than anywhere else. What I'm going to show you is what it looks like when a fish bites you on top water is uh, very important because you have to be able to see your bait to do this kind of fishing. And what you're looking for is there's going to be a ripple. The, the water around your lure is going to ripple up and you're gonna see this big circle come out, right? This big circle of wake. And if I can catch one out here, that'd be preferred. Now, you're looking for that because that's an indicator that a fish is about to jump on your lure. Let's see if we can't get one out here. So that indicator is important. You know, you need that visual cue because if you don't have it, you're not gonna know that a fish is about to jump out of the water and grab your lure and that's when you have to set your hook like you couldn't even see that one I don't know if you guys saw that bite that tail come out of the water there that was um one of the ways fish will end up doing that sometimes so the important one of the important things is to really pay attention to your lure because sometimes they make that ripple more often than not they make that ripple right but sometimes it's just a fishtail all you're going to see is a fishtail come out of the water. And this kind of rolls into uh, one of the other important things with topwater fishing, right? You need to be a little more patient than other things, right? Because that lure can sit in the strike zone where a fish is so much longer, you really don't want to rush this fishing too much. Because what you end up doing is you end up rushing it and you get a swipe and you never saw it because you were too busy, you know, pop, pop, popping around. Let's so see if we can cast up in here and get a steelhead to bite. Now I want you guys to watch where my lure lands. Okay. Now let's see if we can we'll be able to see that ripple at this distance. We should, right? That's that visual cue that I'm looking for to know, hey man, you're you're about to get bit. So watch for the fish to come out of the water, because when he does, that's when you're gonna want to set the hook. Now I'm also not in ideal topwater condition right now. Top water seems to be a lot more effective at night, but I'm gonna cover that here uh, shortly when it's effective to use top water. And this is gonna go into kinda lure basics as well, right? Because color, 
color matters pretty much all the time. Um, it's a little bit more of a cloudy day, so gray color is usually better. Uh, if it was sunny, I'd be throwing something red or you know chartreuse, something that popped a lot more, looks a little bit more natural, or you know just something with some color to it. Because that gray, they're just looking for that backdrop, man. If the fish are looking out, they're looking for that backdrop. Did you guys see the ripple at all? I know it was a little quicker than uh, that was a lot quicker than I wanted to be, but that indicator for the hook set is that fish coming out of the water. And hopefully, you know, if everything's going well, that's a smallie too. It's a big smallie. Hopefully, you'll get that uh, that pre-indicator where you'll know, okay, there's a fish about to come out of the water here. I need to be ready to set the hook. I really want them to do it out here in the open because the water is so much better looking. I know you guys will be able to see it there a lot better. And that's where that weight kind of comes in, right? Because if I would have been a little more on it, um, I would have fished that slower, and I would have seen homeboy rippling up instead of uh, just that jump that you guys saw. And it's kind of hard to see this, right? It's kind of hard to make an example of this without having you guys literally in the game with me. which is why I'm trying to catch one as close as possible to me. There's that ripple, there's the fish, and he went for it. So my hook set was a little bit late, um, but that jump was also kind of weird. So I hope that ripple kind of gives you guys an idea of what to be looking for, right? So we've covered poppers, now I want to get into the, uh, the walkers. My personal favorite bait, I catch more fish on a walker than I do on a popper. Um, in cleaner waters. If I'm in a little bit dirtier water, like let's say the Everglades or uh, Mudwater River, North Carolina, something like that, I'll usually throw you know something that is louder because the water is that much dirtier. Now walking is extremely simple, right? It's just a, a two twitch and then a rail of your slack. It's not fucking hard. That's all I do to walk. Sometimes I'll time the twitches out a little bit. Sometimes I'll do a twitch and a reel and then a twitch. But the goal is to get that bait to do that side to side action. Now in water with current, this is a little bit harder. And as I'm showing here, you can take it and you can do a double pop and get that walk like this. And there's the fish. You can take it and do that double pop and get that walk, or you can, uh, if you're looking for a little bit quicker retrieve, you can um, do a pop and then a reel and then a pop. Uh, just make sure that your reel settings aren't too high, right? Because if you're on a, you know, if you're maxed out on your reel speed, you're gonna be drawing that bait in way too quick. And it's always, always, always important with topwater fishing, like I said earlier, to make sure that your retrieve. Uh, is slowed down a little bit, or at least the pauses in between your twitches, right? So there's my double twitch. Make sure I get that pause because I'm looking for that visual cue of that fish uh, swirling on my bait, right? I usually just stick with the double pop, um, but if I'm looking for a little bit quicker retrieve, I'll do a reel and then a long pop. Because you're still getting that side-to-side -side action that we're looking for, but it's a little less prominent, right? Or it's a little, it's just a little quicker. It's a little bit faster of a method than the double pop, right? I find myself hurrying too much when I do a real pop. So I really have to watch myself on it. But if I know I'm in an area where uh, fish are kind of holding up and, um, you know, they're not quite as aggressive and I really want to take my time with the walk really the real click is the the better way this method here because I can slow it down a lot more and I'm just getting that one walk instead of two at the time okay 
but like I said, I pretty much always stick to the uh, the double pop walk here. That's something you got to look out for. Every now and then you'll throw, and your lure will end up in the middle of a a school of fish that are jumping, right? Um, and it makes it very very hard to be able to find that one swirl that you're looking for that's going to be the fish that's coming for your lure, right? So what I'll normally do if I end up in one of those uh, one of those schools of fish that are jumping out of the water is I'll just leave my lure there. I won't move it until, uh, until they're done doing their thing. Let's see if we can't get one on the walker here. And it's all about timing. You know, you may need to speed it up or slow it down a little bit to give yourself a better presentation. Um, you may need to uh, maybe just do the one walk instead of the double tap walk. There's a the fish spooling. There was the jump. Fish on. Oh shit. Oh no. Okay. Max that drag out a little too much. See if we can't get this uh, very fucking aggressive fish in. He's a mean one. This will be the last catch I uh, make for the tutorial, just to you know, kind of keep the time down here. I'm hoping you guys are learning um, something, right? Because uh, the topwater fishing can be sort of intimidating when you first start, because it's it's new, it hasn't been around, you know, it's not a stop and go. It's um, you got to be a little more active, and you've got to uh, got to pay attention. It's certainly not a passive fishing method. It's a pretty good steely. Come on, buddy. We're almost here. There we are. All right, there's another trophy steelhead. So, uh, just to go over a little bit of what we learned here, I want to make sure that you guys understand the two different, or really three different types of lures um, that are around. The frog poppers are going to work better around grass than um, than your regular poppers because they don't get hung up. They're weedless, stuff like that. Um, if you know anything about frog lures, that's that's one of the big selling points of them is they are weedless and they're uh, much easier to pull through grass. So the main things I want you guys to take away from this are it's not hard, you can do it. Uh, I want you to have knowledge of these types of lures as far as popping and walking go, because there's really only two types um, in all actuality, there's a popper and a walker. Uh, the frogs are just better for, I'd say better for bass. Um, and if you're looking to branch out in your species, then the, uh, the poppers and the uh, the walker bait like I have here are usually a little better um, for that you know you're not going to catch many steelhead on a frog uh, I want to make sure you guys take your time don't rush topwater fishing it can be uh, a little tedious that you have to slow it down that much but um, it is what it is you're just gonna have to slow it down and uh, pay attention to your lure make sure you're watching your lure for that ripple for that visual cue that you need to set the hook remember you get the ripple fish will come out of the water that's the time to set the hook and you'll figure out the timing pretty quickly um, and don't get frustrated if you lose a few fish on it because everybody does uh, I still lose fish on it and and that's just the way it is so I hope you guys learned something if you got any questions for me please leave them down in the comments uh, if you go into uh, the description down below I'll have my Twitter and Instagram down there for you guys if you want to follow me on Instagram look at cool army pictures um, or fishing pictures or whatever and I'm trying to get my Twitter account back up uh, and it should be back up within the next day or two. So I hope everybody has learned something. And like I said, if you guys have any questions for me, please leave them down in the comments. And please subscribe if you want to see more Fishing Planet videos. And let me know what basics or advanced methods you guys want covered in the next video. So I'm Crew Dog Gamer. You guys have a wonderful day.